Hello, Michael here. Welcome. I'm glad you could make it. Thanks for clicking on this video, and I think you uh, will get something out of it. <clears throat> the topic today is time management, but it's not perhaps what you thought. Um, <clears throat> it's not about how to be efficient about using your time and making a schedule and overcoming procrastination and all of that kind of thing that usually gets talked about with time management. <clears throat> this is about managing four time zones. And the zones I'm talking about are the past, the present, the future, and eternity. <clears throat> um, and before I launch into it, let me just say why I developed this way of thinking about it. <clears throat> Having um, early on in my life uh, a real fascination with mindfulness and meditation and <clears throat> the notion of uh, living in the present moment. Uh, maybe, you know, the more popularized uh, version of this was Eckhart Tolle's The Power of Now, the idea that all we have is the present moment and we should be in the present moment and uh, mindfulness is about being aware of what arises in the present moment without judgment. <clears throat> um, there is really no past and there is no future. All we have is the present. I, I gave that a lot of thought and checked into my own experience about it. Um, <clears throat> in a sense, yes, of course, it's true. All we have is the present moment. <laughs> whenever, Whenever you open your eyes or pay attention, it's now, right? It's now. But what happens in now? What is arising? What is in there, in that famous present moment of now? <clears throat> well, there's thoughts of the past, there's thoughts of the future, and just maybe sometimes there's an experience of eternity, the timeless moment. So let's start with the past. And by managing the time zones, I mean having a proper relationship with each one. Um, <clears throat> and I'm going to talk about the mode. So how do we access each time zone? Um, I'm going to talk about a dissociative and an integrative relationship with each time zone and uh, point out the difference. So let's consider the past. Imagine that you really never thought about the past. Well, the mode for the past is the memory. We remember things. Imagine that you never remembered anything. Imagine you wake up in the morning with no memory. You don't know where you are. You don't know who you are, you don't know your name. If you had a job, you don't know what it is. You don't know how to do it. You don't know how to get there. If you encounter people, you don't know who they are. Um, I, I, I know I'm uh, pushing this a bit, but um, really consider the possibility that uh, there is no past and that uh, thinking about the past is not um, useful at all. Of course, we have to remember the past. <clears throat> it's how we have any sense of who we are or what we know, uh, who we know. <clears throat> so what's, what's the dissociative relationship with the past? I would say that it's dwelling in the past in terms of both um, regret and resentment. When we remember the past, we can think of things that we really are not happy with ourselves about. And we can dwell on that, <clears throat> generate great feelings of guilt and shame. Or we can think of things that have been done to us that we felt were unfair. Think of ways we were mistreated and dwell in resentment, bitterness toward others. 
these are not particularly helpful. This is a way to think about the past in a way that's not connected to our lives, not connected to our present and our future. So an integrated or an integrative relationship with the past, <clears throat> I would characterize in terms of learning. We gather knowledge. Um, we remember that knowledge. If uh, somebody has mistreated us or we have behaved in a way that we regret, we can examine that. We can think about what was what was wrong with what we did or how to keep an eye out for a person who might mistreat us again in a similar way. So we can learn from our past. <clears throat> so the key reason I think we even have a memory so that we can learn as we go and take that knowledge. And it informs us in the present moment and informs our judgments and our decisions in the present moment. So past, the mode is memory, the dissociation <clears throat> is dwelling in it in terms of remorse or, or regret and resentment. And the integration of the past involves learning. Present moment. Um, we have access to the present moment through the mode of our senses. Um, <clears throat> and um, in addition to the five senses, in the, in the Buddhist tradition, the mind is considered a sense. It's a way to perceive things. So <clears throat> the mode is to notice what's happening internally and externally in the present moment. <clears throat> if the present moment has no relationship to the past or the future, then we're pretty much stuck with our impulses. We're pretty much stuck with our immediate response, or I should say reaction to whatever is happening. Uh, we're not employing any learning from the past. We're not anticipating <clears throat> the consequences of our behaviors on our future. We're, we're just reactive, constantly reactive. Um, that's the dissociative part. <clears throat> to be integrative in our relationship with the present moment means that we are utilizing our learning from the past. We are having control over our impulses because we can anticipate the future. We can anticipate there will be consequences for what we do. Um, and we can think about that. It's to, it's to be thoughtful in the present moment and uh, to be responsive rather than reactive. That's the integrative approach to the present moment. The future. The future, I would say we, the mode for uh, accessing that time zone is anticipation. It's our imagination, anticipating what may be next or somewhere later. Um, the dissociative approach to that is worry and anxiety, catastrophizing. Um, imagining, just imagining all the bad things could happen. A uh, favorite quote of mine by uh, Mark Twain is, uh, <clears throat> I've lived through some terrible things in my life, some of which actually happened. Which means uh, yeah, a person was worried about what might happen and it didn't happen. I suppose another dissociation, aside from worry and, and catastrophizing, might be unrealistic dreams and, and pipe dreams uh, about a, a, a grand future that uh, we just sort of hope for. Um, 
and expect to come. <clears throat> Maybe you can guess what the integrative approach to the future is. Yeah, planning. It means setting a goal, setting a target, having a vision, having a dream that you can begin to figure out how to get there, begin to do things in the present moment that will <clears throat> bring about a future. As Jordan Peterson likes to say, it's taking care of our future self. Um, this is the realm of delayed gratification. We're not just giving in impulses in the immediate moment to get immediate gratification. We're envisioning a future and doing things that will lean us in that direction. We're not uh, worrying about it, we're planning for it. Or as Shante Deva said, uh, <clears throat> if there's nothing I can do about it, why worry? If there's something I can do about it, why worry? So uh, what we can do about it is plan. That's the integrative approach to the future. If you like this video, please give it a like and subscribe to my YouTube channel. You might also share it with someone who you think would be interested and might benefit from hearing it. Below there's a description of my online store called Attention Bazaar and a link for getting there so that you can go and browse and hopefully find something that's just right for you. I think that's it. Let's get back to the video. What about the time zone of eternity? This is a difficult one to describe. Um, I think the sages of the ages in trying to articulate this experience uh, have mostly thrown up their hands in the end and declared it uh, unspeakable. <laughs> but I'm going to try to say a few things to point in that direction, like the finger pointing to the moon, the proverbial finger pointing to the moon. <clears throat> I want to start with identifying that it's when we're grounded, centered in our basic witnessing awareness, that part of us that simply notices, notices whatever there is to notice, that awareness is constant. It doesn't change. It's the same for all of us. Uh, <clears throat> it's aware of the present moment and it is aware of memories of the past and anticipations of the future, but it's not caught in them. In a sense, it sees them, it sees time itself as an illusion. Uh, doesn't reject it, but isn't caught in it. Doesn't caught in it. <clears throat> So the, the mode for eternity is absorption through our witnessing awareness. The dissociation, <clears throat> how can this go wrong? Well, <clears throat> it's when we enter a trance, uh, we'd call the dissociative part of it to be in a trance. It's when we're not particularly aware of what even happening around us in the present moment. We've lost touch with uh, the past, the future. We're in kind of an alternative space outside of ordinary reality. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> I, I'm saying that this is dissociative and that puts it in a, a, a category of avoid this. I do want to acknowledge, though, that there are uh, useful uh, ways to be in that space. Uh, it's good for artists, it's good for creative uh, endeavors to go into kind of a parallel universe for a time. <laughs> Things can occur, uh, there can be flashes of understanding, so it's, it's not entirely bad. But if we, if we live there too much, uh, everything gets neglected. Everything we really 
leave reality, so to speak. <clears throat> so the dissociative approach is to be in a trance. <clears throat> the integrative approach, I would, I would say it's transcendent and the integral sense of transcend but include. So to be experiencing eternity in an integrative way means that we're absorbed in our awareness of the present moment, of what's happening. We're not neglectful of the fact that there has been a past and there will be a future, but we're not caught in it. We're not caught in it. We're not uh, mesmerized by the illusion of time. <clears throat> There's a great freedom in it, but it, it is aware. It's not tuned out. That's that's my my attempt to describe this. Uh, perhaps you've had some experience of this. Meditation is a primary practice for accessing uh, the eternal moment of now. There are other ways that I think this comes upon us. It could be a moment of awe, you know. A I know this is a cliche, but I, I'll just say you're standing at the Cranton Canyon at sunset. Wow, something happens, something happens. You look at the night sky on a clear night without city light polluting it and you see the Milky Way and sense the vastness of space and something happens. We transcend time. <clears throat> okay, so let's review. We have four time zones, the past, the present, the future, and eternity. Each one has a mode, how we access it, and each one generally has a way that we can be dissociated and a way that we can be integrated. For the past, <clears throat> the mode is memory. The dissociation is when we're dwelling in regret and resentment. And the integrative approach is <clears throat> learning. We learn by our memory of the past so that we're prepared for the present and the future. <clears throat> In the present moment, the mode is mindfulness or sensefulness, paying attention to what's happening externally and internally within our minds. <clears throat> the dissociative approach is to be reactive is to be so embedded in the present that the past and the future disappear in a sense, and we're subject to our impulses, it's reactive. The integrative approach is to be responsive, <clears throat> is to be responding in the present moment by making use of our learning and <clears throat> being aware that there will be consequences in the future. That's the integrative approach, the present moment. The future, the mode, is anticipation. The dissociative approach to that is <clears throat> worry and dread and catastrophizing about what might be. <clears throat> the integrative approach is planning, making some decisions about how we would like the future to be and setting out to do what we can to bring it about. The last time zone, eternity, the mode is absorption. <clears throat> the dissociative approach is to be in a trance and cut off from awareness of reality. <clears throat> the integrative way of experiencing eternity is transcendence always meaning transcending and including. <clears throat> so this hasn't been your ordinary uh, way of understanding time management, I don't think, uh, but it's a, a bigger picture. It's a way to manage our relationship to the basic zones of time to recognize how we can get confused 
and how we might remedy that confusion, how we might move from being dissociative to being more integrated. <clears throat> and again, the, what prompted me to give thought to this is what I perceive to be some confusion about what it means to be living in the present moment. I think there are some ways to understand that and try to practice it that are not particularly helpful. So I hope that this has <clears throat> been a helpful little uh, sketch of, of how one might relate to the four time zones. Now this won't help you structure your day but this might help you have a proper relationship with these four time zones and not get stuck in dissociative patterns and also not really not have to uh, take on a kind of a spiritual idea that uh, the past and the future aren't real and that you should just be living in the present. We have a life to live, to create, and to hopefully have some longevity in, and we can take care of our future selves. <clears throat> so, happy travels in all four time zones. Till next time, thanks for coming. So long.